I use the terminal for absolutely everything. No VS Code, no File Explorer, and definitely no mouse. Well, maybe sometimes. And this has made me a much faster developer. But there was a time before my enlightenment when I didn't know anything about Vim Motions and I used VS Code slash cursor all the time. And if this is something you want to do, that is use the terminal more, I'm gonna go through exactly how I did it in less than three months thanks to Warp Terminal. And before I get into it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Just like other developers, I consume a lot of content from the Primogen, as well as Tej, Dax, and Adam. And all these guys, especially Prime, constantly talk about how much better NeoVim is than anything else. So I thought, why not try it out? Which led me down a rabbit hole of using the terminal for nearly everything. The first and hardest step of this whole process is to learn Vim motions. And for people who have never heard of that before, well, they're pretty weird. I mean, for starters, instead of navigating with the arrow keys, you use H, K, J, and L. I know, right? And it gets even better. To undo, press U. To redo, press Control R. And I'm not even gonna get started on copying and pasting or yanking and pasting. But what really helped me when starting out was to use the Vim VS Code plugin. And I learned the basics from this free CodeCamp video. I also started learning to touch type, which helped out a lot. But don't expect to be a Vim expert overnight. It's a slow process, you'll make a lot of mistakes, and you'll think about quitting and going back to your old ways. But you have to stick with it. For me, it took about a month of regular use before it felt comfortable. And I honestly can't imagine going back to anything else. I mean, the guy who came up with this is an absolute genius. When you get into it, it feels really natural and it makes so much more sense than anything else you've used before. So after that, I moved to NeoVim because as great as the Vim VS Code plugin was, the undos were not incremental enough and the other parts of VS Code slash cursor did not support Vim motions. So it was annoying having to change navigation styles. At the time, I knew almost nothing about NeoVim. So to help me get started, I used NVChat, but in hindsight, I should have used LazyVim because I don't use all of NVChat's features. And even though the setup came with its own plugins like NVim Tree, Mason for LSPs and LuaLine for the status line, I ended up installing some extra ones like Noise for a central command line and notifications, Supermaven for autocompletes, and Avante only for the inline AI chat bubble because I prefer open code for full on AI conversations. And all of this was made insanely simple because of Warp Terminal, which I've been using now for more than three years. Check out Bernard's video for all of its latest features. But the Warp agent specifically has been insanely useful for me when it's come to configuring NeoVim. If I want to install a plugin, I just get the link to the repo, give it to Warp and ask it to install it. Same thing when adding custom key mappings or adjusting the UI. I've even asked Warp to create a script for my NeoVim setup so that whenever I SSH into a server, I can run the scripts and use my exact same NeoVim config in a remote server, which is really cool. I've also made a few UI tweaks to Warp, like switching the theme and font so it matches NeoVim, turning on Vim key bindings, hiding the tabs so they don't clash with NeoVims, and adding a padding of 20 pixels, which makes NeoVim look awesome in most of my recordings. Warp also supports the Kitty Graphics protocol, which means images can be rendered in the terminal. So instead of using the default file browser, I use Superfile to navigate and preview files right in my terminal, I also use LazyGit to review large project changes. And I also use the fish shell instead of ZSH because it's much faster. Check out this video from James to learn more about fish. And that is a quick run through of my terminal setup. Whenever someone asks me that question, I'm going to direct them to this video. If you want a more detailed video on Vim motions or NeoVim tips, then let me know in the comments. And if you want to know how I got this padding around all of my windows, then check out Aerospace. I mean, I could talk so much more about Aerospace and Sketchy Bar and all those configurations, but I have to stop the video here. Again, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, happy coding.